Welcome to Fight Zone. What a night of action we brought to you last week from Ponds Forge in Sheffield. It was the Dave Allen comeback. Well, that's well underway now. He made short work of his opponent. Hot prospects Mark Jeffers, Stevie Levy, Katie Healy, they all added to their credentials. And there was a shock in the main event. Anthony Tomlinson stopped by Mexican Dante Jardon. Mexican fighters have been doing that quite a lot recently. That was for that intercontinental title, the latest of many belts claimed on Fight Zone so far. We're bringing you live boxing every single week. We've moved to the northwest. We're in Colne in Lancashire, 10 minutes north of Burnley. This, a hot prospect show. All looking to add their name to the Fight Zone honors list very soon. Josh Holmes in particular from just nearby Irby. It's very much a Kevin Marie stable here in Lancashire. So let's have a look what we can bring you this evening. We're gonna kick off the action with Rafał Benka, the Polish now based in York under the guidance of the great Henry Wharton. He takes on Lithuanian Gennady Gorejewski, who's now based in Liverpool. We've, following that, we've got Dan Booth from Manchester taking on debutant Kyle Boothman, also from Manchester, and then Liam O'Reilly against Dale Arrowsmith. Liam O'Reilly's got a really good story as well. More of that as we go through the card. Then the main card, and what you have to do to see this part of it, of course, is pay you 4 99 for all the action every single week. That's a monthly subscription. We've got Lindsay Basinski against Veda Masiokata that, for that super featherweight contest. Reese Farnhill from just down the road in Burnley takes on Bolton's Ben Thomas. Very tough Ben Thomas. Lee Conley, well, he's always in action. He fights every week. We've seen him a few times already on Fight Zone. He's in against Reese McMillan. A big power puncher. And then the main event, the local boy Josh Holmes who takes on Michael Horobin in a six-rounder. Well, we are in the very, very charming and historic Edwardian theater that is the Cone Municipal Theater, a beautiful venue as well, very atmospheric, and everybody inside really looking forward to this one. So we'll get on with the action. And here's our MC for the evening, Stephen Reed. Good evening, and a very warm welcome to the wonderful municipal hall here in Cole. Thank you very much for the Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome his opponent, making his way to the blue corner. He's from York, 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first promotion back since the pandemic started for Frank Duffy Promotions and Mammy Boxing. And they've asked that before we commence the boxing this evening, we show a mark of respect and honour those people who have been sadly lost as a result of the pandemic and those that have been severely affected by it. So ladies and gentlemen, we ask you all please to remain silent while we do a tender salute. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, this bout is four three-minute rounds in the Super Middleweight Division. Brought to you courtesy of Frank Duffy Promotions in association with Mammy Boxing and streamed live and exclusive around the world on Fight Zone TV. Your referee for this contest is Mr. Jamie Kirkpatrick from Preston and your timekeeper is Gary Drennan from Burnley. Introducing first, boxing out of your red corner. He wears the black and the silver shorts. He weighed in today at the 11 stone, 13 pounds and 2 ounces. Today he takes part in his 16th professional contest. He boxes out of Liverpool via his home nation of Lithuania. He's the Baltic Bomber, Kanatsi Kretschewski! <laughs> and the positive of first for me in boxing out of your blue corner. He wears the white and the gold shorts. He weighed in at 10 stone, 5 pounds and 8 ounces. He brings a stolid and successful amateur record two times regional amateur champion and the winner of silver and bronze medals in international tournaments. As a professional boxer, he's undefeated with one win from his one contest. He's from York, that is his home nation of Poland, Rafał Benka! <laughs> Your referee will now give his final instructions. And Rafael Benka wearing the white shorts trimmed with gold. Based in York, originally from Poland, just his second contest. His first bout that we did witness on Fight Zone at the Fight Zone Arena in Sheffield. Got the job done, although it was a strange ending against MJ Hall. There was a swelling on his head and the referee called a halt to that. More than two rounds had passed, it went to the scorecard, so the technical decision going Benka's way. In tonight against Gennady Krajewski. He's physically the much bigger man in there, taking the fight very late notice, the Baltic bomber. And again, we've seen him a couple of times on Fight Zone, part of the Kevin Marie stable. But a good, bright start from Benka, and alongside me, as ever, delighted to say. A man who scaled the very heights, the former IBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World and the voice of boxing, Glenn McCrory. Hello, Dom. It's very nice to be at this lovely old hall. And Benka, he comes with quite a bit of support in the crowd. And he's getting off to a, a good start. Looks very purposeful in there, getting on the front foot. And it's him that's doing all the work.
Gureski just nodding at Benka there as he took a, a good punch. Well, he's just moving the bigger man all around the ring at will. Switching stance there, attacking both directions and landing with a good right hand at the end of that combination. Well, Benka off to a winning start in his professional career, of course, trained by Henry Wharton against Krieski, who takes to the ring for the 16th time in the paid ranks, yet to register a win. And you can see Benka is well schooled as he would be with such a an excellent fighter like Henry Wharton showing him the ropes. Very, very popular fighter indeed, Henry, and a, a real nice guy. Passing on his knowledge to, as you say, Benka, you can tell anyway, just if you didn't know he was a top amateur. You can see it in his work this evening. start to just his second professional fight well it was all Benga he attacked a head and body orthodox and southpaw just showing some of his skills in there more we normally see a little bit more from Trieste and he's, he's he's very very negative and I think that's because you know obviously these punches are hurting him Tower. Yep, a very late replacement opponent. Tricky times these days, of course, for promoters to get these shows on. Sterling work by all involved tonight. Back to the, the same work for Benga on the front foot, just trying to cut the ring off, and he hasn't got much to cut off by the small ring this evening. Well, it's snappy work again from Benka. His movement is good as well. Well, you can tell he's a, a bigger man, Krievsky. But he's not using that size. Well, we saw Krievsky get stopped by Stanley Stannard on fight zone back in June. He has boxed since then. At the end of July was out against Jay Munn, but of course, just a one fight on the record of well, I think this fight's all about giving Benga a bit of confidence because that might have been dented a little in his last fight, even though it was a win, but you know, through an injury as well. Working body and head well. Rafael Benka, 27 year old, who moved with his family as a young boy to York. Kajewski has also settled in England after starting life in Vilnius, Lithuania. Now settled with a couple of kids. Works the doors in Liverpool. He's 
See, when he's throwing that jab, that head movement, the lateral movement of Benka is normally right on point. Yeah, it's very rare that Kriyavsky manages to land. He did get one shot through. Kriyavsky trying to let some punches go now. Good work at the end of that round from Benka again. I'm going to take a wild guess here, Glenn. I think you've got Ben Kirk a couple of rounds up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not so much of a wild guess, is it? Now, everything is, is coming from Ben Kirk. Kriyevsky very much not in the winning mode at the moment. He's trying to throw some punches out, go through a one on that occasion. But it's quite rare. Good defense from Benga for the most part. Well, we've touched upon it already. There is a huge size disparity. And I think when you look at Kravieski's record, he's been stopped five times in 15 defeats, but against much bigger opponents, the likes of Tommy Fury, Bob Ajisafi, and Brad Ray, real Brad talent, Ray. Brad Ray from Manchester, and as we mentioned earlier, Stanley Stanard. But Benga doing what he's got to do here, though. He's He's winning, he's getting rounds in the bank, and we always speak of that, how important it is after, well, the crazy times that everybody's lived through, and he's just starting out life as a professional. He can learn more by getting some rounds in the bank. Yeah, it's all about the experience, being in the ring in front of a live audience. And these kids, are, they've been out for a long time for the most part. So he needs, he needs the work. And it's a, an absolute packed house here. It's like a mini York call, isn't it, Glenn? You took the words out of my mouth there. <laughs> exactly, exactly is. It, it's an excellent little hall for for boxing. Not a bad seat in the house. Well, I'd imagine it's also quite intimidating for the, for the fighters because the, the crowd is almost on top of them. Well, because of COVID restrictions, there is more of a gap than normal between the ring and the first seats. So you just get the sense of how intimate it normally is. But it, as you say, not a bad seat in the house. It really is. The balcony particularly, you probably feel right on top of the action. And he's picking some nice shots in there, Benga. He's working the uppercut to good effect. And you can see, you know, he's gone out there with a with a, a game plan. You know, he's he's trying to use variety. He's trying, he's working the body. Then he's switching the head. He's bringing in, you know, all different shots. Right hand to the body. Just rattling in the rib cage. And another solid round for Rafael Benga. A little bit of fun and games at the end of the round as well from Krzyzewski. For every minute of every round, Benka's control center of the ring moved the bigger man around. Some good shot selection. Yes, he's thinking in there. And he is he is using you know good variety, trying to pick his shots out, trying to get that, that guard brought down. But he's not he's not panicking in there, he's not rushing anything.
course, we are joined on the flight zone by viewers of seconds out. That until the main card as well, so you're very welcome. Ten seconds, corners. So the fourth and final round. But this, will uh, we see a little bit more from Kriesky this round as he knows he's getting closer to the final bell? We've seen this quite a few times with away fighters that they will try and step it up in the final round, but I don't think that's going to be the case here. I think Benka is still enjoying doing just what he wants to do in there. Well, he's so dominant, Benka in there. Good defensive work there. solid workout from Benka's point of view and he's facing a man he won't normally be in a ring with a super middleweight he's going to be fighting a couple of div divisions below you would certainly imagine so I think it's been probably a very useful exercise for him very much so and he he, he hasn't allowed Kriyevsky to, to get involved you know Kriyevsky could have could have tried to use his strength a little bit but you know, the defensive work from Benga has been good. Switches to Southpaw and has good success there. Now back to Orthodox. Something of a workout, really, for Rafa Benga. It's Benga still doing the, the chasing, just trying to cut the ring off, following his man around. Hitting him with shots with both hands. Well, final knockings. Benka is going to move to 2 0 for Yeski. 16 without a win. But it does mean he's got through those four rounds and he can get out again next week. But from Benka's point of view, a really good slick showing, so good shot selection, controlled every minute of every round. And really, I think maybe one or two jabs got through when he was maybe just a tiny bit switched off, but overall the movement was great. When those jabs were being flicked out by Krajewski, Benka was alive to it and again was just really bullying the bigger man. Yeah, that was a, a good workout for him. I think Henry Wharton will be more than happy to give him his second win. Well, our scoring referee, Jamie Kirkpatrick, has handed the scorecard over to our MC. We're just waiting for Benker to uh, get dressed by Henry Wharton. We can cross now to get the official result with our MC. Stephen Reed.
Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of action, the only for me, Jamie Kirkpatrick, scores the contest 40 points to 36 for your winner, Rafael Benko! So good win from the man from York. He shifted a few tickets for his fight tonight. Popular character. It's an emerging little stable that Henry Wharton has going in York. Yeah, there was there was good work from Benga throughout the, the contest. Used Good variety, was always the boss, was never in any any trouble and just got himself a thoroughly good workout in there. And completely in command for the four rounds. But crowd enjoyed his work. And big smiles from Henry Wharton. And I think any moment we'll have we'll have Benga with, with Dom to tell you how much he enjoyed that. <laughs> or maybe we won't. <laughs> Well, of course, main event tonight is the local boy, Josh Holmes. He is here, he's ready, and looking forward to getting in the ring with Michael Horobin a little bit later, but plenty more action to come, of course. We've got Liam O'Reilly, who will be in action shortly. And we have a debutant. We always have a debutant on Fight Zone. Kyle Boothman makes his professional bow here tonight against Manchester's Dan Booth. Then Liam O'Reilly who's had an absence of a couple of years. In action against Dale Aerosmith. And Lindsay Bishkinsi is also back in action again. We saw her earlier this summer on Fight Zone make a debut, so a second fight for her tonight. Now, of course, as you can see, it's 4 99 a month. For that, you get live boxing every single week. So less than a pint, depending on where you drink, you get all this action, fantastic value, and of course, some what action we've had on Fight Zone as well. Some fantastic title fights, some brilliant 50-50s, and we've seen the emergence of some incredible prospects, Glenn, and potentially we've just seen another cracker in Rafael Benka, and there'll be more to come tonight. Well, uh, that's the great thing, that we're around the country, and we're covering lots of fighters, lots of promoters getting their chance to, to get their guys out and get them seen, and you know, you're exactly right, Don. We are. We're uncovering some, some good fighters, and uh, we're having some great action. I'm sure there's plenty more of that tonight. Great stories as well, of course. The return of Dave Allen last week in Sheffield, which was a great show. Another shock on the cards. Another Mexican bashing a Brit in the shape of Anthony Tomlinson, of course, and Dante Jordan. But of course, it's all about the prospects, and we like to see. These boys and girls progress on fights so now, joined by Rafael Benke. You've just had your second professional fight now, Rafael. I know that you, like many, were frustrated by the delay to your 
first pro fight. Now the second one's come around quite quickly. Yeah. You got good rounds in against a much bigger man tonight. I know. I know. Uh, I, know I knew he's going to be bigger than me. So Henry just Henry, Henry, Henry told me to take it easy. You know, walk my way in. You know, jab him if I can. You know, go inside. Few, 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 uh, throw a few hooks and uh, step back. Because he, he might give you know, a counter punch. So just to be aware of that. Yeah, and you did move well as well. I mean, when he was flicking the jab out, your movement was yeah. very good. Your shot selection was good. Is Henry very pleased with you? Yeah, Henry. Henry is very pleased with me because uh, I wasn't I wasn't as as excited as in the first fight. So you know, I was thinking what I'm doing rather than you know throwing hundred punches an hour. So I try to you know land every punch in the target. Uh, it's a really tight, intimate venue as well, isn't it? Yeah, I it's mean, a it's great venue. I didn't I didn't expect that to be that good. That good. And the crowd, oh my god, unbelievable. Yeah, you, you've done a few tickets tonight. So, what's the plan for you next? Uh, get back in the training and wait for, for another date. And slightly progress from fight to fight, you know. And, you know, go up the ladder and get the fight, title fight. Well, Job done tonight, well done. Yeah, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, continuing with your second contest of the evening. Please welcome in his way to your red corner from Stockport, Kyle Boothman! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome making his new walk from Manchester, Dan the Monk Boo! Ladies and gentlemen, this crowd is four three-minute rounds in a super welterweight division. Brought to you courtesy of Grand Buffing Promotions in association with Manny Boxing and broadcast live and exclusive around the world on Fight Zone TV. Your referee for this contest is Mr. Jamie Kirkpatrick and your timekeeper, Jack Hussain from Leeds. Introducing first, boxing out of your red corner. He wears the black shorts and he weighed in at 11, at 10 stone, 11 pounds. Today, he makes his professional boxing debut from Stockport, Kyle Bootman. And introduce his opponent, boxing out of your blue corner. He wears the blue and white shorts. He weighed in 10 stone, 11 pounds and 6 ounces. He brings a professional record, four victories, one defeat, one win coming inside the distance. From Manchester, Dan the Monk Four three rounds. Dan Booth wearing the blue sparkly shorts with white trim. Kyle Boothman from Stockport in the black shorts. And Booth who takes to the ring for the sixth time as a professional. Four wins, one defeat. The defeat coming in his last fight, that back in February of last year. 
but still plenty of ambition, the 34-year-old. Against Boothman, whose experience came by at the unlicensed scene before turning pro, and now makes the bow with the Arrowsmith brothers looking after him, Dale managing, who's in action later, Louis in the corner. Well, they're not hanging about, both quick to try and engage. Booth looking to get his jab working, and then concentrate on the body. Decent right hand to the body from Booth there. He does have a rather splendid moustache. Well, I was going to say it compares very favourably with one that Louis van Pooch used to sport, but it's not quite the same these days. Old Pucci that we see a lot of on Fight Zone, but Booth is quite magnificent. <laughs> well, he's getting about his work quite well. Booth, busy enough, good hand, high held guard. Not doing enough work, Boothman. Got to try and be a little bit, a little bit busy. Most of this round, he's, he's covered up, starts to try and attack now. Left hook to the body, and that Boothman starts to throw some shots, but just caught on the, the arms and gloves from Booth. Well, a lively opening round from Dan Booth and Kyle Boothman. And the lead Lundell in the corner with the instructions for Booth. Yeah, and the, the, guard. the better work, the more technical work was from Dan Booth. He you know, worked behind his jab, tried to double up the jab at times and, and then worked the body. And for the most part, he was getting the better work. Well, Booth, not turning pro till he was in his 30s, but he was a very good amateur. 32 bouts, 25 wins, box for England, moved around some of the gyms in the Manchester area. Was training at Collyhurst and Moston under the guidance of Pat Barrett, but now Lee Blundell in the corner. And again, the temperature rising in this theatre. Very tight, compact, atmospheric venue. Snappy work to the body again from Booth, and Boothman goes down. It was the left foot to the body that did the damage, and Boothman looks to be in a bit of bother. Well, he just beats the count, but Jamie Kirkpatrick's having a good look at him. No, well, he barely, barely made the count, and I think if, if Booth can land... Well, there wasn't a shot there. I think he's still feeling the effects of that body shot. Yeah, I think he's he's tired and he wasn't quite right when he got up. That's why he got up so late. Oh, and a huge left hook to the head and Boothman goes straight down. And I think that's going to be the final action of this contest. Yeah, he's not going to make the count. It's all over. Well, that was an excellent finish from Dan Booth. A left hook to the body initially did the damage. He didn't recover Boothman. And then it was the left hook to the head that ended the contest.
Hook knew exactly what to do. He could tell that his opponent wasn't with it, wasn't quite right, and went straight out with a big, big shot and puts him over. That's a big win for Dan Booth. No nonsense. Perfectly timed left hook right on the jaw. There we go. Just got around the guard. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, Gary. Uh, plenty of respect. Now Booth's over to check that Cal Boothman is okay. And he, he is sat up chatting and smiling as well. So certainly not the debut he wanted, the 25-year-old from Stockport. But again, Dan Booth just knew a bit too much for him tonight. Yes, you could tell right from the start. You know, he had the he had the technique, the skills. He's got the amateur pedigree. You know, he boxed well, softened his man up with good jabs and then body punches, and then didn't mess about when it comes to finding the finish. And good to see all friends now. <laughs> Yeah, and he looks disappointed with himself, Boothman, as well. I mean, again, you know, like every fighter, you want to do the very best, particularly on the debut. Whether or not he's going to be an away fighter anyway, in any case, but of course, the last thing that any old road warrior wants is to be stopped. But that's the way it has ended here, so we can get the official results with our MC, Stephen Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, He's an aggressive fighter, all action pressure, Dan Booth. It's not all about the moustache, Glenn. No, he does look a bit of a, a throwback, doesn't he? He looks like a, a 1900s bare knuckle boxer. But he went about his work very clinical. He's the left hook to the body that started things, and then the finish was very good indeed. One big left hook. Timed it perfectly, got right round the guard, knew exactly what he had to do, knew he had to go out and land a big one. And I think he'll be very pleased with his work. And I think Dom can have a word with him right now. Yes, the man himself, Dan Booth. Well, you got the job done, a brilliant left hook to the body, and then you sealed it with a left hook to the head. Again, an excellent contest for you now that moves you on again to five and one. Talk us through it from your point of view. Yeah, so uh, I've not boxed for 18 months, so uh, there was a little bit of rust in there. Um, I've recently moved to a new gym with uh, Lee Bundell over in Wigan. So, um, you know, I went, I went out, Lee really wanted to get on the jab uh, in the first round, which I did. Um, second, in the second round, uh, I caught him with a good left hook, as he said. Um, he, went, he went down, he was hurt. I just then, you know, when I saw the, the left hook to the head, I took it and he went down and it was in the fight. Now we know you've got a good amateur pedigree, yeah. you turned pro late, I did. but you are all aggressive, you've got that style, you're a pressure fire. We've commented on the magnificent moustache as well, that ah, really you. makes you a throwback kind of fighter. Yeah, yeah, I, I, well, that wasn't the intention, I just tried to grow it in lockdown one and it's kind of stayed. Everyone's trying to say I'm a life person, so don't think people will forget me. Well, well, certainly not, not with stoppages like that anyway. Yeah. So what do you want to do? What's the plan now? You're saying you train with Lee and everything else? Yeah, so... Yeah, so uh, we're looking to get back out in October, probably do a six-rounder then, and then um, just to see, see, where, see where we go from there, you know, but uh, we're definitely looking for the central area next year, I'd say, so we'll just see where, we'll see where the uh, where the future takes us. You're on Fight Zone tonight, and this is a very special little venue, isn't very it? Very special, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, when, I, when I found out I was boxing over in Cole, I was like a little bit like, oh, it's a bit far away, that, but... Um, you know, just come here to see the venue tonight. It's been a great, it's a great atmosphere in here. So yeah, really enjoyed it. Well, you, you made it an early night's work as well, but it, it's quite hot in there as well. Yeah, so it's you, quite hot, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. see you, you put a bit of graft in tonight. Yes. Well done. Yeah, good thank job. You.
Well, of course, people are getting used to what Fight Zone is all about. We're on the road. Sheffield last week, we're in Cone in Lancashire this week, and then next week, we're down in the East Midlands. Carl Greaves and his stable of fighters, they're joining the party on Fight Zone. Stanley Stannard, he certainly caught the eye in Sheffield back in June. He's looking to go 5-0. and We've got a Midland area super welterweight title fight topping the bill between Kyle Hayward and Alex Fearon. So a great night to look forward to in Leicester next week. And Stanley Stannard, well, what a talent he looks. And Cash Ali, of course. Well, since he came back, the pantomime villain, of course. He's been a star on Fight Zone, the European champion. We will be back in Sheffield after our journey to Leicester. It's not just about Cash Ali, Tommy Franks back in action as well. We saw what happened with Tommy, his nemesis, Hugo Guerneros, last time out. Again, just on the wrong end, a tight decision. And then, well, Matt Windle is in the opposing corner for Tommy Frank, and he was involved in arguably the fight of the year against Neil McCubbin. The two light lightweights absolutely imperious on the night. Matt Windell just getting the nod in that. An absolute cracker. We're going to be in Cardiff, London, Aberdeen, Bolton, Malta, all over the place. This, your new home of UK boxing. Fight zone on the road and all for just $4.99 a month. Get to fightzone.uk. Ladies and gentlemen, your next contest. Paul Williams in the middleweight division. Please welcome making his big walk to the red corner, Mr. Fireboy, Dale Amos. Ladies and gentlemen, from this part of four three minute rounds in the middleweight division. And this brought to you courtesy of Frank W. Pensions in association with Mighty Boxing. Broadcast live and exclusive around the world on Fight Zone TV. Your referee for this contest, Mr. John Lathan from Burnley, and our timekeeper, Danny Graham from Burnley. And the first boxing out of the red corner. 
He makes the grey and black swords. He weighed in the very strong one pound and six ounces. Tonight, he takes part in his 49th professional contest from Hyde, Cheshire, the Fireboy, Dale Allosmith. And his opponent across the ring in boxing, out of your blue corner. He wears the red shorts and he weighed in at 10 stone and 13 ounces. He brings an undefeated professional record, two victories, no defeats from Keith Lee, Liam. who's got fine support here tonight in the Cone Municipal Theatre against Dale Arrowsmith in the black trunks. An aggressive start and some wild swings from O'Reilly. man from Keith Lee. It's been an hour of action for a couple of years. Turn pro 31, 33 now. This is third professional bout. The first two have gone his way. But the first thing that you see here tonight, what is a middleweight contest, Glenn, is the height disparity between the two. Yes, there's quite a, quite a size difference, and that might just make Arrowsmith a little more confident. He's normally on the wrong end of a decision, Dale Arrowsmith. But I think he'll notice that he's got a, a good height and reach advantage. Well, as she says, very experienced Arrowsmith. He's 27, but this is 49th professional fight tonight. There you go, good. Good lad, lovely. Been in with some real talent. And what can O'Reilly do tonight? He was a decent amateur, but then a familiar tale, really. Fell out of love with the sport, just had a long spell away from boxing, 10 years, in fact. Had a bit of bother, boxing sorted him out. How many times have we heard that? Almost every time, John. Keep touching downstairs like that. Lovely box. But he's gone about his work very well, O'Reilly. Some nice punches going in. Harris Smith standing in front of him. And O'Reilly letting the punches go. games in there, he knows a few tricks and he likes to have a chat now and again with the opponents. Nice work, yeah, he's really dropping nice his hands, having a, having a smile, but it's all work really nice, from O'Reilly, who's throwing some nice it, punches, yeah, yeah. defence is he good, getting into a rhythm ball. now and, you know, looks good when he lets that, the left hook go to the body. A decent shot gets through from Arrowsmith there, oh, good uppercut. O'Reilly not daunted though, comes back oh, with his own. Lovely left stop, Liam. Really nice boxing, really nice boxing. There you go, good, good, good. Well, in fairness, they, they, they look about inside. two ways apart. But it's good concentration, good defensive work, and good attacking work from Liam O'Reilly. Well, he's not boxed since November 2019, not against Jordan Grannon. He's only had a couple of fights, Fons Alexander and Jordan Grannon. Certainly the busier of the two men, working head and body well. Yeah, nice variety. Good defensive work there, keeping the head moving. He's had to take the odd shot because Arrowsmith is a is a little more on the, the fence than than usual. And I think that you know he knows he's got that that size, that reach, the height advantage. And every now and again, 
He's letting a few shots go. Seven seconds for us. Well, O'Reilly, goes by the moniker, lights out. Give him anything. Second down, round two. to Keith Lee where he's from, over the border into Yorkshire. He certainly brought a few with him. Nice defensive work and then doubling up lovely on that left two. And he's having a... He's having a a few problems to solve in there, isn't he? Go, go, go. To get to get close to Aris Smith. Very nice boxing, Liam. Very nice. Good shot. He's found his distance. He seems to be getting through, and Aris Smith, for all those physical advantages, is on the receiving end, really. Yeah, Aris Smith has a bit of an attack and then walks on to some punches from O'Reilly. Good lad, that's it. Now he's starting to throw more and more combinations, O'Reilly. Getting his rhythm. He's certainly a fan of the bent arm shots though, isn't he? And that left hook particular. Yeah, you know, if he's landing with the, the right hand, you know, he's getting the right hand over the reset, top now. Reset. Getting himself in the range. That's it, don't overwork, don't overwork, clean shots. Lovely good job, that's it. Pick them clean shots, Liam, like you're doing. Good shot. Smith was on fight zone there just good. a fortnight good ago, the York Hall in London against Kingsley Egbenike at the distance. Shot, Lost the D in the fight. Keep picking these shots, always busy, Liam. always in action. And again, he's just doing little mind games in there, urging on O'Reilly. Show me what you got. All right. Well, things were going, going a little bit out of control for O'Reilly. He was up to 17 and a half stone. So he lost, he lost seven stone to, to get himself back into shape, which, which is an amazing achievement. Well, it's a victory all on its own, isn't it, really? And Aerosmith is just letting the hands go a bit more, as you say, than we sometimes see. Yeah, Harris with going forward. Well, Harris with being competitive in the crowd, enjoying this because we were seeing some good work from Liam O'Reilly Liam and, you know, some stubborn effort from Dale Harris with. Well, Dale Harris Smith. Managing fighters as well these days, but a very, very busy road warrior. The choir boy. His brother Louis is over in the corner. Scheduled for four rounds. And there you go. Fast start to the round again from O'Reilly. But he's getting a he's getting a competitive workout. O'Reilly. So much more determined Dale Arrowsmith than, than usual. Well, O'Reilly may be looking to make a statement, try and get Aris Smith out of there, but you've got to be very, very good to do that. You're in a pretty esteemed company if you do manage that, and some of the stoppages that Aris Smith 
has endured have really been either a cut, an injury, or when he has been in with a real class act like a Bradley Ski. James Moorcroft, a real talent. You know, just looking at the looking at the skills and the style of Liam O'Reilly. You know, I think it, it was kind of boxing's loss that he that he walked away from it for for a decade because I think you know that he could have done he could have done quite well. Well, did come back and dabble in the unlicensed scene briefly, of course. Showing that, yeah, as you say, really has something about him. Still plenty of time, he's only 33, then. No, still time to make a mark. But I think you know, it's good to see a fighter like O'Reilly on fight zone, where you keep on covering talent. Well, the list of unearthed gems is long already since Fight Zone began on a rainy night in Sheffield on May the 21st and it's been all action non-stop ever since. Well, Arrowsmith do the old Billy Joe Saunders routine. A little smile from O'Reilly. Yeah, another fighter with, with good variety, good skills. And looks really good when he lets that left tooth to the body go. Well, the heat inside this little theatre is something really. The fighters are certainly feeling it. It all kind of adds to the great atmosphere inside the place. And O'Reilly is doing the job to please the very many that have made the journey from Keithley to watch him tonight. And the crowd really enjoying the spectacle. Smith always plays his part, doesn't he? Again, he's one of the away fighters that doesn't just tuck and run. No, it's good. You know, he's a competitive fighter. He's a little bit more competitive now. He sees that he's got the height and reach, and you know that he, maybe the strength. So we're seeing, we're seeing a better Neil Smith, which is good. Continues with Harris Smith using using good footwork, side to side angles, looping it in, then then body punches. Shots go, but O'Reilly can take them on the arms and gloves. Still just moving forward all the time. Arrowsmith. Smith, you know, he's trying. Lands with a right hand to the body in there. Good shot. And it's been good to see how O'Reilly has handled the size difference. 
Well, he just caught Arrowsmith with a good left hand there. Arrowsmith playing to the crowd. But he was caught. It was a good shot from O'Reilly. Well, he's kept his work rate up, O'Reilly. And I think you know, he had to do that because I don't think you know, you're going to afford to let Arrowsmith into this fight. So he stayed in control. Say. That's it, back upstairs. Your turn, yes. Boxing, I don't think there's any doubt about who has the arm raised, Glenn. I think obviously Arrowsmith has let the hands go on occasion, but O'Reilly has been bright from the start. And a good yeah. four rounds. A good four rounds. Lots of action. Good to see a fighter like Liam O'Reilly going through the motions getting his shots off and you know he's been out he's been out a long time so you'll know, be so glad to get to get the rounds under his belt and the crowd enjoyed every moment of that Good concentration from O'Reilly there. There was a little bit of the gamesmanship from Arrowsmith, but he kept focused and caught him with the left hand when Arrowsmith was just goading him a little bit. But overall, just good work anyway for just a third professional fight from O'Reilly. Yeah, had a, had a really enjoyable style to watch. You know, action packed. You know, likes to get in, in close. You know, get them shots to the body. You know, but he. He was uh, he was good to watch, and I like to see him in you know, uh, a fight where some, somebody's a bit more his size. Well, our referee, scoring referee John Latham, has got both men in the centre of the ring. So let's cross to our MC Stephen Reed. Follow that, Dom. Well, there you have it. 
prospects, debutants, titles, proposals. <laughs> it's yeah. all going on on Fight Zone. Well, and she did say yes. I think we, I think we, can, we can confirm that she did say yes. That's That's Mandy Davis is the fiance. So Mandy Davis, who's been with Liam O'Reilly through thick and thin. I think he was more nervous about knowing that that was coming at the end of the fight than actually getting in there to fight Dale Arismith, <laughs> but thankfully he kept focused on the job in hand and the proposal. Have. It could have been a really damp <laughs> night, a very flat night. I think you would, have, you would have been more nervous, I think. But good to see Romance alive and kicking on fight zone. But it was good work, so he's had a really good, really good night. It was yes, yes, all the way around for Liam O'Reilly. A big smile on his face. And thankfully, <laughs> he, gets, he gets a yes. Well, Dom, I'll let you find out all about it. Well, Liam, congratulations on a couple of fronts, I think. Firstly, you got the job done in there against Dale, who has been around the block and likes to play the odd game in there, and you had to keep your focus. I know you enjoyed it. You were smiling at half yeah. the stuff in there. Yeah. How, how good did it feel? Brilliant, honestly. Well, could have done another four rounds, to be fair. What a fantastic, best experience ever. And now, secondly, you've overshadowed it anyway with the proposal. And Mandy, you said yes, it could have been a very interesting night, had you not? Do you know what it is? I've been nervous. I've planned this for a while, but I didn't know it was on the... On the um, Fight zone until last night, so it could be more like, you know, but she said yes, that's the main thing. Well, we can do it all on Fight Zone. It's not all just about the prospects and all the titles and all the, the wins and, and everything else. You know, the old proposal, that's fine too. We'll have a bit of that as well. So, you're delighted, Mandy? You're happy with that? Happy with his performance as well? Yeah, I'm shaking. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough, fair enough. But, Liam, you did the job tonight. Well done. Enjoy your night. Congratulations on all fronts. Thank you very much. Can I just say a big thank you to all my sponsors? Total Escalators, Westerman Roofing, Davidson Site Services, who's my family also, and uh, Speciality in Timber Co. Yorkshire. And I just want to say a big hello to my daughter, who's at home, she couldn't make it tonight because she's not really well. So Chloe Jade O'Reilly, I love you very much, thank you. Well done tonight. Cheers, guys. <laughs>